The Palestinian Authority makes payments for electricity in the Gaza Strip through Israel. And in an effort to put pressure on the militant group Hamas, Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas cut payments by 40 percent. Israel cut supply along with it. Caught in the middle are Gazans, and across the border, Israeli citizens worried that this could all mean another conflict. Our senior defense correspondent Shai ben Ari reports from that tense border and gives us a first look at some new Hamas military positions. Green flags atop ominous guard towers overlooking a security wall on the northern border between Israel and the Gaza Strip. These structures are new Hamas military positions. The group is still considered a terrorist organization by Israel and much of the international community. But 10 years after its violent takeover of Gaza, Hamas's conduct and internal structure increasingly resemble that of a standard army. Where we see now those flags, this is a Hamas training camp. This is where Hamas, which is a terror organization, training right now to the next war. When a terror organization is uh, practicing uh, meters away from your home, you hear it. We hear explosion, we hear gunshots, we hear shouting. Hila Fenlon is a farmer who lives and works in Netiva Sara, an Israeli community built only a stone's throw from Gaza's northern neighborhoods. The edges of this community reach right up to the Gaza border itself. You can see there are barbed wire fences here, as well as a whole protective wall beyond that. This community is perhaps the most vulnerable to rocket and mortar fire coming from the Gaza Strip. We are so close to the border, it means that their alarm system is uh, not very effective. Uh, sometimes we have just a few seconds to find shelter if we have a, an alarm. Sometimes we don't even have the alarm. These days, the situation along the border is actually the quietest it's been in decades. But there is concern that a dispute over unpaid electricity provided by Israel could push Hamas towards violence. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas has demanded Hamas pay the bill. The Israeli government has sided with him. Fenland thinks this plays into Hamas's hands. Hamas wants this. This is what Hamas wants. Hamas wants to have footage of a, a dark Gaza and use this uh, in order to justify his acts. Uh, Israel needs to be uh, stronger than this. About a mile away is the Erez border crossing, where a handful of Palestinians are permitted to cross into Israel, usually for humanitarian reasons. The situation is terrible in Gaza. There's no electricity, no water. Even animals can't drink the water. There's a period of three to four hours of electricity with constant power outages. There's darkness all the time, when we sleep, when we're awake. Hamas blames Fatah for the electricity situation, and Fatah blames Hamas. And we are caught in the middle. Hamas, to tell you the truth, they provide security, but there's no money. If there was money, everything would work itself out. Some have their hopes on Egypt as a mediator in the crisis, but not everybody is so optimistic. Egypt doesn't pay attention to us. What Egypt? They aren't our neighbors, they aren't our cousins, they aren't anything. Back in Nativa Sara, the concern is not only about those peering over the walls, but also what's happening underground. We're standing now exactly where they found the tunnels in the last war, the tunnel that crossed from Gaza into Israel. This tunnel was a mile long, uh, 75 feet deep, and you have to go to sleep every night knowing that your kids go to bed and some terror organization, Hamas, might come out from the ground from anywhere and uh, uh, do the worst anyone can think of, and that's scary. Our senior defense correspondent, Shai Benari, here with us. Shai, let's dive into one of the images we saw in that piece, those towers run by Hamas, sort of testament to the fact that on both sides there's a constant preparation, even if it appears p calm. What exactly is their purpose? Right. Uh, you have uh, Hamas military positions really facing Israeli military positions that are quite similar running along this border. These towers that we, knew, we saw in the piece are relatively new. They serve more than one function. Obviously, they give Hamas a look into what's happening onto the Israeli side, but they also help Hamas actually crack down on cases of infiltration, on cases of shooting, which we see from time to time. Hamas wants to keep that to a minimum. The recent cases that we've seen in the past few years have not been carried out by Hamas. I'm talking about shootings and infiltrations, but rather more extremist groups. Hamas is an interest
interest in keeping that uh, to a minimum to not inflame the situation. The general belief in Israel amongst the security establishment as well is that Hamas is not interested in another conflict. At the same time, it is an indication of the amount of resources Hamas is indeed funneling towards its military buildup. Talking about military positions along the border, talking about an entire network of tunnels. There's only a handful, supposedly, of attack tunnels. But there's an entire network, of veritable underground city beneath Gaza itself, talking about uh, bunkers, uh, places where the leadership can hide, places to store ammunition. That's where all this money is going. And on the opposite side, you have the Israeli military preparing uh, with new forms of technology how to actually Indeed. stop and detect those tunnels. Shai Benary, thanks very much for that report.